So is this it? Is this the new normal? Is this what we've gotten ourselves into? I mean, I, everything that's happened up until this point, there's so many things that I just I would prefer not to make normal about this current pandemic. Now, there have been some things that have been great. I mean, some things have been amazing. Getting to spend more time with my family has been phenomenal, and they act as though they like spending more time with me too, so that's good. That's a, that's a win. I, I guess I'm driving less, which is a bit of a win, considering um, now I, I pay slightly less for my car insurance premium, so if that's a win. I could get used to that. But there are some things, some habits, some, uh, some things about this pandemic that I just I don't know that I necessarily like. I'll tell you first off that I am not a huge fan of how empty the church feels day in and day out. The void of us gathering in person on Sunday is something that's really starting to wear on my soul. I'm not a fan of that, and I'd hate to make that routine. Uh, movie theaters and malls might as well not really even exist at this point. They don't, they don't even know what to do during the midst of all of this. But probably the worst of all, the worst of this pandemic for me, the thing that has almost become the most habitual for me is that I have lost complete concept of what day it is. The construct of my week doesn't even feel or look the same anymore. And I don't know if the same goes for you, but it feels like, like, like Susie said just a minute ago, that there's this, it feels like we've got this, this Groundhog's Day that just keeps going and it's hard to keep track. And Dave's put this slide up a couple times over the last few weeks, but I feel like it's worth putting up again. It, it looks like this. It's a sign out front of uh, El Arroyo and it says, for those who have lost track, today is Blur's Day, the 14th of April A. And I know it sounds funny, but the truth is I'm, I, I'm starting to live that. I'm starting to feel that, legitimately feel that. And I think the issue with, with us feeling like there's no construct for the week, the reason why I feel like it's necessary for me to feel a construct for a week is that it reminds me that a weekend is coming. I know you may be saying now it's not, it's not habitual, it's not becoming a habit, but in some way, it might be, right? I mean, most experts say that it takes somewhere between 21 to 31 days to make or break certain habits. Some will say that it takes upwards of 90 days to create a full-blown life change. Well, we've been in this thing now for 128 days. We've been in this thing now for, for over four months. We've been in this thing for 18 weeks and three days. My wife and I moved here and, and with our children, and we, we've been here now for 72 weeks and three days. 18 of those weeks, or 25% of our time in Austin, has been in the midst of a pandemic. It's shifting the way that we perceive everything, and it's a filter that we now have for our lives. So in some way, shape, or form, whether we want to admit it or not, we are making or breaking habits in the midst of this entire thing. And for me, my biggest fear is losing the construct of a week. In addition to reminding me that, that a weekend is coming, it's, it's always good for me to know that when I've put in a hard week's worth of work, that at the end I get some rest from it on the weekend. It's what I'm working for. We're working for the weekend, right? But work has looked so strange since the beginning of this pandemic. Most of us working from home remotely, going to church from home, it just, it, it feels so disconnected and our work is so tied to our value and our value in our work is typically found and validated through personal or, or in-person interactions with the people around us. So now that we're in a situation where we don't get as many personal interactions or in-person interactions, what we're left with is feeling somehow that our work is not 
worth it, that we are not worth it because our work isn't bringing the validity that we were once used to. So do we, what do we do in return? We start putting more on our plates. We take on more. We work harder. I don't know about you guys, but going into this pandemic, I was like, ooh, there's a lot of free me time. I'm going like, to start buying pants that are like two inches smaller in the waist. Like Things are going to get on track. Everything's going to be hunky-dory, and I'm going to come out of this pandemic like, like closer to Jesus, better shape, like everything's going to be great. It didn't happen at all. It still hasn't happened. It's, it's only gotten more chaotic, and, and, and we've added more to our plates, so much more. If you're anything like me, we've added so much more that we actually don't even know where the margin exists anymore. We don't know where or when we're, we're supposed to rest. My fear is that we're, we're losing the concept of being able to rest well. Today I want to explore what it looks like to rest well in the midst of a pandemic. To explore what it means to rest well in the midst of chaos. As we explore that this morning, would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this morning, for this time, and this, this unique um, set of technology that you've, you've kind of woven into our existence to be able to connect in a very unique way to, um, to each other and to you. God, we know you can use all things to your glory. So we say, be with us now. Use this moment now. We love you. We give it all back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I guess in order for us to move forward, I should probably start by defining the, the kind of rest that I mean when I say um, we, need to, we need to start resting well. I'm not really necessarily talking about a good night's sleep, although a good night's sleep is definitely something that is necessary. And I'm not even talking about taking a break or kicking your feet up or, you know, smoke them if you got them or, or sitting down and playing Sudoku. Uh, if you talk to my wife, I've played every single Sudoku puzzle that even exists in the last two weeks. I'm like a fiend right now because it's, um, I use it as my form of escape which I think is what a lot of the resting we do does. It, it, it allows us to escape from the reality that we're in. Unfortunately for that form of rest is that no matter what we do, inevitably we have to step back into the mess. And did that rest just make us disconnect for a moment, or did that rest actually do something for us, fill us with something? You see, I think that rest sometimes leaves a, a little bit of a void that I think is felt by a, can only be filled by a rest that we find in the Spirit. A rest for our soul, if you will. A rest that allows us to breathe new breath. A, a, a rest that, that reminds us that in the end of the day or the end of the pandemic, that, that this is all going to work itself out because we believe it will. I, in thinking about this over the last couple weeks, I, I kind of, I was wrestling with how to make this maybe as, as most pragmatic as possible, to give you maybe some sort of a road map to, to achieving this rest. And, and, and as I thought about it, I, I really landed on three things that I believe are fully necessary for us to achieve this level of rest in the midst of this chaos and this pandemic. And the very first thing that I believe we need to, to achieve this rest, to actually achieve a rest that is good for our soul, is we need faith. We need, we need to believe in something. Personally, it's, it's, we need to be believing in the fact that Jesus is exactly who he says he is. Believing that God is exactly who he says he is throughout his word. A belief that, that basically says in the midst of this chaos in the, the, in the pandemic that we can go, you are still in control. 
There's a story in the New Testament that I love. It's a story that um, it's found in the um, in Mark chapter four, verse thirty-five through forty-one. And in this story, Jesus is, um, and his disciples are in the midst of his ministry, and they decide to get in some boats to travel across some water to continue their ministry on the other side. And uh, it goes like this. It picks up in verse 35 saying this. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, uh, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. His disciples said, or he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified in that moment, and they asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. thing I love about this story, there's a couple things. First off is that our Savior in the midst of this storm has the ability to rest inside the stern of a boat. there's There's a storm going on in a boat and you're trying to sleep. It seems like the least possible, like, or capable place for anybody to sleep is in the midst of a storm on a boat. But here our Savior was going, it's good, I need to sleep, I need to rest, so I'm gonna do it now. The other thing I love about this story is the illustration of Christ's power. You see, his his, uh, disciples' reactions to his miracles were always a little bit, they were always left with awe and wonder because when you raise someone from the dead, that is an amazing sign of power. And when you heal someone that is sick, that is an amazing sign of power. When you walk on water, that is a a miracle that defies um, physics. But when you tell the waves and wind to be quiet and everything goes still, that is showing that you have control over things that most people don't have control over. You, You are showing them that every single thing on this planet responds to the word of God. Every single thing responds to the word of God. Every knee bows. He he questions their faith in that moment, and and, and that's why I I, I brought that verse up anyways, is I, I feel like to ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, do we, as we read the Bible, as we follow Jesus, do we actually believe? Do we have faith that God is bigger than this pandemic? That he can pull us through. The second thing that I um, that it, that we need in order to achieve a level of rest for our souls is is we need joy. We need joy in the midst of this chaos. Now I know that's a I know that's a tall order. And before I go any further, let me tell you that um, if you haven't, I would encourage you to go back to July 5th. Um, Dave taught a message about um, celebrating early and often. Uh, It's an amazing message that uses the book of Ruth as framework uh, to kind of almost outline the type of joy that we need to have in the midst of unknown and curious times. Um, It's a great message. It illustrates it perfectly, so I would encourage you to go back and watch that. But for now, what I'm going to do is try and give you as much as I possibly can. You may be saying, joy in the midst of chaos sounds insane. It actually sounds impossible, or it sounds cliche. Impossible because what in the world is there actually to be joyful about right now? 
and cliche because it just sounds maybe tune deaf or tone deaf or it sounds like it's 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 a bit churchy to be like be joyful it, but it is a bit churchy you see, the joy that we, we are able to find right now, the reason joy in the midst of the chaos right now is so, is so necessary is because it actually it creates hope. You see, um, Paul describes the joy that we're looking for so well in, in Romans. He says it like this uh, in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. He says, therefore... Since we've been justified by faith, we have a peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. But not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, the interesting thing about joy through the midst of suffering or chaos or a pandemic is that joy in the midst of a trial is actually the birthplace of hope. Not just hope for ourselves, but hope for a hopeless world. When someone watches you carry joy through a circumstance that doesn't make sense to them, they have to ask themselves what makes them different. And the difference is I know God is in control by my faith through him. And I have joy in knowing that all of the glory will go to him in the end. This is a challenge for me. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not the most hunky-dory, joyful person all of the time. And nine times out of ten, I vibe off of the people around me. I love a friendly smile. But when we're all wearing masks, it's hard to see your smile. I don't know if you're like mean-mugging me or if you're like, I'm really glad I see another person right now. So it's really hard for me to even start down the road of joy sometimes. The solution that I've found over just kind of my entire, my faith journey, if you will, is um, I found that, that, that my joy is found through song. And it might not be singing a song per se. It could be just remembering lyrics to a song that I know helped me get through a hard time. See, if I say, to myself that if I say, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, how it chases me down, fights till I'm found, and leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. And I don't deserve it. But still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Sometimes it's not that easy for me to say those words over my circumstance. It's hard for me to believe them sometimes, but then again, that makes it all the more necessary to, to say them, to repeat them until I feel the change in my life that I need. Especially if these songs are born from Scripture, it's like scribing Scripture onto your heart in a time of need when you need to be reminded of the glory and goodness of God that you can begin to repeat these things. Repeat these things over your heart. The peace that we're, the rest that we're trying to achieve requires faith. Faith in knowing that God is bigger than anything. Faith that knowing God is fully in control. Faith in knowing that there's no mountain so big that he can't move it. There's no person too sick that he can't heal him. There's no burrito that can be microwaved so hot that he can't eat it. It's not possible. He's God. 
It takes a joy that goes regardless of what's happening in my life, regardless of how deep this wound is cutting, and regardless of how bleak it looks out there because of what the pandemic is doing to everybody, I will say that the glory of God will continue to reign. I catch glimpses of the glory of God every day, and I carry a joy because of it. I recite song and scripture over my heart to remind myself of the hope that I find. third thing it takes is it takes time now i i assume that i probably lost a couple of you because because faith sure joy i'll give it a try but time we started off by saying we have absolutely no time who has time for anything i I barely have time to brush my teeth in the morning and i'm not even going anywhere for work what what in the world is like how do we not have any more margin so to ask me for time is a very hard ask right now i've already divvied up so much of my time and i've filled my plates with so much more i have no time to give so i would say remember one thing That God created time. He created, he created every second that we get. And because of his creation of it, he, he actually has no concept of it in, in the way that he operates. Time to him is nothing. So if this was a recipe... I would tell you that you need to put faith in the pot, joy in the pot, and just a pinch of time. In parentheses, it would say, like, season to taste. However much time you want to put in there. But give him a drop. Give him anything. Give him a breath. Give it back to him. And the, and the reason being is because, because if, if a God that invented time has no, doesn't operate in time, has no concept of it, when you give him even just a breath, even just a moment of your time, he can do a lifetime worth of change with it. When you give him one song or you give him an hour, you give him however much time that you have, God can do whatever he wants with it. He can move mountains with that time. He's God. So give him the moment. So we can find that rest. All he wants is for you to bring whatever you can to him. That the time that we bring him, even if it's within a breath, is, is acknowledgement of who he is and the authority and power that he has. The acknowledgement that this weight has gotten very heavy. My ability to process all of the things around me in this pandemic is, is getting very heavy. And Christ says it doesn't take more than a second to just... Bring it to me. He says it like this in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. And I'm reading from the message translation for this because it just, for me, it just rang so clearly about where um, the rest that I'm looking for in this moment. And he says it this way Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. And you'll learn to live freely and lightly. He's saying, I don't need a lot of time. I just need you.
to come to give that burden to me, to have faith in the fact that I am and I always will be bigger than anything this world faces. To carry some joy because you have a hope that says, I know there will be a brighter tomorrow because of the Savior that I believe in. That when the book closes, it'll say, and, and, the, and all the glory went to God. And there's a joy that we can carry. And it takes nothing more than a moment to realign our hearts, to drop the burden of everything that's been weighing us down, and to feel the rest that our souls need so desperately to feel in this season. This last week on Monday, my... Um, my wife had an incident where she collapsed in the kitchen. She had a bit of a dizzy spell and made her way close to the ground before she fell. She then had some ringing in the ear and some garbled speech. We couldn't understand what she was saying. And, and she came to and sat in the corner of our dining room for a moment and, and we made a decision to take her to the to the ER because we just didn't we didn't know what was going on so we have some family watch our kids and i i take my wife to the er and as soon as we pull into the parking lot i open the door for her and she immediately throws up in the parking lot of the er and i i take her into the waiting room and we get checked in and they're like sir are you aware there's no visitors allowed during a pandemic and I'm like, this is my wife, though, like, and we don't know what's going on. And they call her name, and they, they get her a wheelchair, and they put her in a wheelchair, and they wheel her off, and, and they dismiss me to go. Um, I drive home to relieve my family of watching the kids. And as I'm driving home, I begin praying, and I just said, First and foremost, God, be with my wife. You're the God of the unknown, so be with her. The second thing I, I just began praying was I, I kind of slowed myself down and I just started to breathe. And I began to say over my breath, it is well with my soul that that in the midst of chaos because there's one thing we know it's 2020 is not getting any easier so in the midst of this chaos to say I have faith in the fact that you redeem all things, you control all things, and you are bigger than all things, I'm going to choose to believe it. And regardless of how uncertain or scary or frustrating things may get, I'm going to choose to say it is well with my soul, and it is very clearly not well with my soul. And I'm just going to say it again. It is well with my soul. No matter what wave comes next, it is well with my soul. No matter how big the trial, no matter how drastic the pandemic, it is well with my soul. So is this it? Is this the new normal? Well, I can tell you it's not normal. It's not the new normal, because what in the world is normal anymore? But this is it. This is, this is where we are. hoping that right now if you've been feeling the burden 
piling up on you of the, the work you've been doing, the time we've been trying to divide, the, the, the way we've been making ourselves busy in the midst of a pandemic, the, this everything that has kind of uh, accumulated to this point that in this very moment we could spend some time to rest and to breathe. to put into practice a, an attempt at least to, to tap into that rest. If you would close your eyes. I know Casey led us through some breathing earlier. Some of you might have just thought, oh, that's just Casey being Casey which is not wrong. But if you skipped it because you didn't believe it earlier, maybe the reason it's come back around is because God wants you to actually try it. With your eyes closed, you breathe in deeply through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm going to start by reading this psalm over you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of 2020, I'm not going to fear any evil. Because you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil to the point where my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Breathe in. It is well. Breathe out. With my soul. Breathe in. It is well. Breathe out with my soul. Breathe in. It is well. Breathe out with my soul. Breathe in. It is well. Breathe out with my soul. 